Hello and welcome to our 10.16 release video in which I will show you all the cool new features in Preside 10.16. So we're going to dive straight in and start with a really frequently requested feature which is the ability to reset admin two-factor authentication. So a little summary of uh, the situation and how this comes about. So we have two-factor authentication and here I'm logged in as a test user. So I can set up two-factor authentication by going to Edit Profile and Settings, two-factor authentication, set it up, and then I'm going to use my phone, which I'm doing right now, to add a QR code using the QR code. Uh, replace, And I'm going to verify the code on that. So that's 743065. OK, so now I have two-factor authentication set up as this test user. Now, the problems can occur if I log out, come back a few months later and I've lost the app uh, that I used to log in. So I log in and I'm prompted with this and I can't, and I can't log in until I get past that. Uh, up until now, uh, we've had to get hold of devs and manually do this in the database. And now we have a nice simple way for system admins over here to come to the user and reset their two-factor authentication code. Just going to confirm that. This user's 2FA has been reset and that button goes away. So now if I refresh the page as this user, I'm able to log in. And now I can once again go into my edit profile and set up two-factor authentication if I wanted to. If we were forcing 2FA in this instance, um, I would immediately be shown the screen to reset up and rescan my QR code and so on. So that's resetting two-factor authentication. Next, a really nice handy little addition to the admin is the ability to set a custom home page for the admin. So let's say I am mostly doing my work in data manager or something like that. If I navigate to that page and come to the user menu, I just click on make this my home page. It will tell me that that's been updated. And now when I click home, I'm at the data manager and that's my new default page whenever I log in or whenever Preside doesn't know where to go. So if I just go to localhost admin, it's taking me back to this home page. So that's that. Another super quick one to demo is some really simple enhancements to the um, impersonation toolbar. So we've got our Pixel 8 CRM installed here, so it might be a little different depending on your setup. But here I'm going into CRM contacts, and if I impersonate, say, Professor Nicholson, then I get this new notification at the top here. So now it's in orange. There's a slightly different icon. Uh, when I click on it, I should be able to go straight to that user's record. In this case, it's our Pixel 8 CRM, but if you're using Vanilla Preside, that's going to be the website user record. And if we just hit the back button, we can also then hit this cross button to stop impersonating the user. That's it. OK, uh, so next up we have the settings page. I have done this several times. You go into system settings and you can't easily find what you're looking for because there are loads of settings. So what uh, Russ Cole has done here is to make this audible alphabetically and searchable, which we didn't have before. So even if you don't search, the order is now a little bit more predictable or totally predictable. And you can search and that's it. OK, next we have delete prompts on content. So let's come to CRM, for example, and contacts. In 10.15, we added uh, an ability for devs to really easily add a little text box input to confirmation prompts. And a confirmation prompt is one of these. Um, and in 10.16, what we've done is made in Data Manager, delete prompts um, by default will now, well, sorry, not by default, <laughs> will have the ability to easily get an input match text on the delete record action. So here it's the default, which is to delete. And if I hit confirm, that's going to delete the record. Now it's turned off by default on single record deletes and turned on by default on batch record deletes. I've turned it on everywhere for this demo. Developers have the ability to 
set a global default for both batch and single record and they also have the ability to do a per object setting if they want to change that per object you can also change the text that you have to type in you can make it dynamic based on the record for example um, just a really nice feature to make it easier to give you robust systems where people can't so easily accidentally delete things and I think that leads us nicely on to batch deletion of records and batch update. So in the past, we've always had the batch, well, we've had for some time, sorry, batch update single fields on records uh, and batch delete selected records. And that would work on the page of records you were looking at in your data listing, which was okay. Um, you could select up to 100 records, but if you needed to update, say, 2,000 records, you're going to have to do that at least 20 times. Another downfall with it was that that would all happen in a single request and that could be really slow and could time out uh, and cause problems with users not knowing whether things have been updated and so on or not. So two things, we've um, added this button here which allows you to select all the records that match the current filter. Now I don't have any filter at the moment and there are a thousand records total. So if I select roughly a thousand records matching your current filter and I hit delete selected that means I'm going to delete a thousand records I won't do that just yet um, but you can also start interacting with the filters so you could build a, a filter like this or choose one you've already done uh, so let's say look at leads that contain the text DR so mostly our oh, DR space is probably going to be no, it doesn't do that so it's going to be yeah, any anybody that contains doctor or DR like Deirdre Blendman and so that's 28 records so if I select all select 28 matching this current filter and I'm going to change their contact type from lead to contact and run that and that's going to now give us a progress bar and a log of the progress which when there's a few thousand records you're updating is going to be really useful it means you can navigate away from this page as well and it's going to carry on in the background uh, and so the, the same happens for delete. So now you can see there are no records that are matching leads. Um, but yeah, that's that. So again, um, there are developer notes on the upgrade notes on this one because what you might see if you select all your records in a particular data view is you might have like custom buttons here for functionality. Developers will need to update their code to work with this system where they're allowed to select anything that's matching the filters that created this data set. Okay, so almost there. So the next one is going to be alt text in the asset manager in images. Uh, this has been requested for a, a long time. So let's take an image that we have in the asset manager. We now have an official core implementation of alt text for screen readers and so on. So you can enter an alt text on your asset if I were to right click and inspect this element here, you would see that the alt text is indeed filled with that by default everywhere that you output that image. Again, there's upgrade notes on this. Developers, if they're doing custom image outputs, they may need to update those to make use of this alt text field. But everything in core works out of box with the alt text. In addition to being able to put in a default for your image, what you'll see is if I inject this into the home page, Let's see if I add an image, go to find Pluto. Uh, there we go, Pluto. It auto populates the alt text in this dialog, but I can change it in this instance. So in case you have quite a generic image that you're using in different contexts, you could change that alt text. I'll save that in the page. And let's take a quick look at it. it is it's not going to give me that on hover <laughs> in my browser but let's if I inspect it and see the source code here's the image and you can see that there's the alt text it says change the alt text and that is alt text okay so last but not least we have an enhancement to the form builder where we give you the ability to restrict access to individual forms uh, on the form itself so previously people would do this uh, we'll create a form like this test form here and then there might be a page in which the test form is embedded so we can see here we've put the my test form 
as a widget into the page. So let me preview the page. There we go. Uh, <laughs> so now we can see that we're only able to do this on Tuesdays. So let's see what's going on there. So when we come into general settings, there's now a new restricted access field set with some extra fields to allow us to control this behavior. So we can see that I have an access condition that says today is Tuesday and to accompany that I've got an access denied content should I not match that condition that tells me something um, should I not match that condition. So it says you're only able to do this on Tuesdays. So what we can do is one of uh, three things. We can we can say that you must be logged in and match this access condition or we can just say well as long as you're logged in you can carry on with the form or as we had just now we can say well it, you know as long as you match this access condition you can go through so let's see what happens when we use the require a logged in user so we sh would expect now that we see you must be logged in uh, da -da. Oh, I need to save the page there we go save the form yeah, and say so we you must be logged in. So let's just see. Do I have any website users? I might do. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So if I impersonate a website user, go to the test form. I can now input. So what's nice about this is not only does it check it when you're displaying the page, which workarounds previously would do. What can happen is you might spend a long time filling in this complicated form here. Um, you know, maybe you need to go off and find your qualifications and attach them to the form and so on. Uh, and by the time you get around to submitting it, you've actually been logged out. So let's just do that in another tab. So we'll log this user out. So we'll just imagine that time has passed and they're now logged out. So now when we submit, it's going to ask you to log in. Um, who was it? <laughs> it was test contact 414, test con contact 414 at test.com very strong password and it says you're logged in now and it's saved your form submission and it allows us to continue safely so previously what people might do is just put an access restriction on the page but then when they submitted the form and they were logged out uh, it would carry on through and they'd be able to submit the form with this we can now put the restriction on the form itself and we prevent any unwanted submissions. And that's pretty much all there is uh, in terms of the highlights for 1016. It's a relatively small release. Huge thanks to all the community involved um, and people inside Pixelate, of course, for helping make it happen, um, raising issues, making pull requests, loads of those happening. Um, yeah, so thanks a lot and thanks for watching.